Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about one of my favorite philosophers of all time. In fact, he's my personal philosopher. And he cited a lot in this article, but you need to get a little bit of information on his background in order to understand why he's important. And that's Alfred North Whitehead. And here's an actual picture of him. So you can see that. That's what he looked like. Alfred North Whitehead is a process philosopher. He's one of those guys, and if you look at the history of academia or the history of thought, as, if you, as you start going back to the World War II, pre-World War II generations, there were a lot of people who excelled in multiple fields. It's not like today where you know, you're an expert in a kind of a small field. But Alfred North Whitehead, like, he's like, to me, he's on the same level as someone like Max Weber, Mary Parker Follett, um, some of these. He started out as a mathematician. And then as he kind of matured and published a lot um, in his career, he started shifting more into philosophy, cosmology, the nature of the universe, theology. There's actually a, a Whitehead's process theology that's out there. Um, and he published in all sorts of different domains, and he actually published a lot in the field of education, which is why he cited so much in this article. He also had multiple appointments at Trinity College, Har uh, Imperial College, and his final appointment was at Harvard. Now, Whitehead is known as one of the most quoted philosophers of all time, but he's also one of the least understood. And there's a lot of reasons for this. I think the number one reason is he uses ordinary words in very unusual ways. For example, when he says the word actual, he means actual as in part of human reality or human experience. And this can be very confusing, for example. Um, he talks a lot about ingression and concrescence. Those are not words that are used in everyday English. And I have to admit, even though I've struggled with his book, Process and Cosmology, which, by the way, has 9,009 citations. Not bad for a, a philosophy book, right? But, you know, even as I've struggled with Process and Cosmology, I, I've gotten very confused. But fortunately, there's a lot of follow-on literature and process studies that cite Whitehead an awful lot and has kind of made sense of it. To tell you how poorly understood he was, and I don't know how true this um, true this is, but when Whitehead was invited to teach at Harvard uh, back in the, I guess it was in the 30s, he joined um, kind of these monthly speaking engagements, and they called them the Whitehead Lectures. And supposedly, the first lecture was like packed. Everybody wanted to see this great British philosopher that they had invited to Harvard. And fewer and fe fewer people kept coming back. And I guess eventually towards the end, he was just lecturing to an empty room. Um, and he just lectured anyhow. I guess what else could he do, right? Um, because people just didn't understand what he was talking about. He was also part of the Boston Circle. That was a group of intellectuals at the time. It included uh, people like, um, well, a lot of them were lawyers and doctors, you know, smart people, the who's who of Boston. But the one that you may have heard of is Chester Barnard, who wrote Functions of the Executive in, I believe, 1938. And he and Alfred Whitehead were friends. And Chester Barnard took a lot of Whitehead's ideas and also Mary Parker Follett's ideas and used them to write Functions of the Executive. I feel like in some ways he kind of plagiarized her ideas, but in other ways I don't feel like he did because he wrote, I mean, his book is 350 pages and it includes a lot of interesting ideas that neither Whitehead nor Follett developed on their own. Uh, but I wish he had cited them a little bit more. But that's Alfred Whitehead. Those of you that are management scholars and you need a, a good, legitimate Whitehead citation um, in your papers, he wrote an article in Harvard Business Review in 1933, I believe it was, called The Dangers of the Past, uh, The Uses of the Past and Its Dangers. And so that can kind of give you a little bit of a citation there uh, to give you some legitimacy because sometimes when you're publishing in management research and you cite too much philosophy, um, that can get you into trouble. Nonetheless, um, although I've spoken to some of my friends in the philosophy department at different schools and they all say that Whitehead's useless and people forgot about him, he's very much having a revival in the Scandinavian School of Management. He's also very popular in France and the United Kingdom. Uh, so within a very niche area of management studies, including my own process theory or process of entrepreneurship, he's actually quite popular. And maybe that's why, because of my own bias, that I chose this particular article. Anyhow, um, if you guys like this video, I've thought about doing a whole series on Whitehead's process theory, and I'm not sure whether it's um, it would be worth my time to do it and whether people would actually like to watch it. But if 
this is something to interest you, make sure you post in the comments below and tell me like whether you'd like the whole series um, of his process thought just kind of wholesale or maybe you'd like something more specific like how it applies to business or something like that and I'll be happy to make some videos up. Anyhow, in our next video we're going to talk about the history of the field of entrepreneurship. If you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up, that's a like. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and as I mentioned, comment down below. I'm looking forward to seeing the next video.